All right, today I want to talk about what I used to do before I became a web developer and uh, touch base on the types of jobs that I had and why I decided to get into web development. There's a longer story here, but basically um, I worked in grocery stores and restaurants. So I worked in Publix. I started working there when I was 16. Um, I did like Publix, but when I moved to go to college, Publix, Publix kind of sucked. So I moved on to like Dave and Buster's, which was pretty fun other than the drunk people. Um, after Dave and Buster's, I started uh, working on campus at the school and that's where things get interesting. And um, that is where I kind of got an itch for web design because I worked as basically an in-house graphic designer and I was also a marketing intern uh, when I was in college. So I worked at a uh, George Gwinnett College as a student assistant and I was doing graphic design and I was also working for Aramark, the food service provider for the college and I was a marketing intern. So I was uh, kind of seeing both sides. I was designing a lot and then I was also kind of like face-to-face -face marketing like walking up to people, trying to get them to upgrade their meal plan, stuff like that. And um, in the midst of all of that, I was kind of like freelancing on Fiverr, and this is before Fiverr was super oversaturated. And I had um, basically like a, two or three recurring clients, but one of them was uh, moncourt.com. They're on Instagram, I'm sure I'll tag them or something. But um, yeah, they, at first wanted me to do like design for them so I was making a lot of flyers um, I made like kind of like full size like eight and a half by eleven uh, flyers for them and eventually they asked me if I could make them a website so my first time getting into web development was using Squarespace to basically set up like the initial version of their website and uh, after that they started giving me referrals and <laughs> the referrals that they were giving me were more and more web dev related. Um, I didn't have any web dev experience at that point, uh, other than using, you know, content management systems like Squarespace. I don't even know if I had a lot of uh, WordPress experience at that time, because this was around, you know, sometime between like 2014 and maybe like 2017. So um, I had to actually start turning down work. Um, Good jobs too like uh there was a, a real estate broker i believe that wanted me to basically um use like an api to get like mls listings on the site so that if a user came to the site they would basically just see like all of the properties that um this agent could help them buy and you know at that time i didn't know anything about code so I didn't even know what an API was. I didn't know, you know, any JavaScript at all. I'd probably known like a little bit of HTML and CSS. Um, and that was only because I'd make forum signatures and, you know, you have to use maybe like an image tag or whatever in your forum signature, um, things like that in MySpace. But it's mostly just copying and pasting things into the right spot, right? Those weren't real actual web development skills. Those were more of like, interests and hobbies that I had along the way but um, yeah so after that um, I ended up dropping out of school so I had to quit both of my jobs as a marketing intern and as an in-house um, graphic designer being a student assistant at George Gwinnett College so for a while I went back into food I worked at a Starbucks and Einstein Bagel Bros on campus and I would say maybe like two or three years in, I just hit like my breaking point. I just walked off the clock one day. After I got home, I tried to figure out like, what am I gonna do? Um, less than two or three months after that, I was already, basically I had started the uh, prep coursework to get enrolled into Thankful's Bootcamp. So that was kind of my journey before I was a developer and um, I will also say that like we all become like developers for different reasons like for me I wanted to be able to do the things that people were asking me you know I had people coming to me asking about websites whenever you're a graphic designer people kind of get confused I think because you're designing things that you can also put like an entire site together and that's certainly the case today but back then I did not have those skills and I didn't know 
you know, where to go. And today we just have a lot of better options, right? We have like Webflow, Wix, Squarespace. Uh, you know, before that, I think people were using Weebly really hard. I know the marketers were killing Weebly. If you just need like one pagers, there's like card.co, you know, two R's, I think, or it's two R's or two D's, but card.co. Um, if you're trying to do like a marketplace, there's like share tribes. So, you know, um, I, I, I wanted to build things more than I wanted to design things. And um, I feel like coding is kind of like you put the pieces together for your own puzzle. You know, you can decide like how easy or how hard the puzzle is and you just get to fill in the blanks. And um, <laughs> that was kind of like my route into web development because I just realized that like, honestly, you know, design takes a lot of research and I, I, I got started off on the wrong foot. It's kind of like if you learn how to jog the wrong way or if you start typing the wrong way or if you learn how to play the guitar the wrong way or learn any instrument the wrong way. There's habits that are hard to break. And um, eventually, after I finished coding boot camp, I was still trying to hold on to the idea that I could be some type of hybrid designer and developer. And in some ways I am for my personal projects, I will still make my own wireframes and mockups and stuff like that. But professionally, I would not hinge anyone's success on my design skills. And <laughs> that when I had that realization, I would say about a year and a half or maybe like, you know, maybe earlier on this year, um, that is when I decided like, okay, I really do just want to be a developer I really do just want to code I really do just want to test you know features um, and that's important to think about when you you know say that you want to transition into web development or boot camp you should really figure out like you know what type of job do you want what do you want to do every day who do you want to work with what do they look like what do they smell like all those things were questions that I didn't have answers to and that kind of stagnated my growth as a developer um, these past two years because I didn't know those things. So um, yeah, I've held lots of odd jobs. I mean, before I was a developer, I hosted like an open mic, I was rapping. Um, but I think it's important to talk about like where we came from and where we started because the job that I had at Starbucks was so incredibly tough that when I look back on it, it's mentally prepared me uh, to be a developer because you know you always run out of something at Starbucks man you run out of straws you run out of cups you make a drink the wrong way it's just like that with development shit goes wrong all the time so um yeah that is what I used to do before I was a developer if you are looking into getting into development I would really encourage you like take a look at the jobs you've had and instead of shitting on them and saying that you hate them and you're so eager to get out of them think about like what skills from those jobs are you gonna bring in uh, to your career as a developer? Because soft skills are super important. Um, handling stress is super important. Um, being versatile, being flexible, being adaptable, you know, being able to look at problems from different angles to solve them, as opposed to getting stuck trying to do things one way, you know, trying to force a, a square to fit into a, a circular shape is not gonna work in development. You know, if you <laughs> had a job where you did a lot of research or if you were just like a great student before you were a developer, I would say you probably fare a lot better than I did because you may be more comfortable researching things and, um, you know, watching YouTube videos, quickly getting yourself up to speed on different things that you might not know about. So uh, I guess the ultimate the ultimate uh, thing I want you to take away from this video is to not shit on your old jobs. <laughs> One, because a lot of people that work with you at those old jobs, they really did probably care about you. And two, because those old jobs are a thousand percent valuable. Every experience that you've ever had is probably valuable to you in some way. You just have to really think about it, like really think about like, the frustrations and all the things that you go through in those old jobs and think about like, oh my God, wow, this has really like affected my mindset in a good or a bad way. Hopefully it's good though. So Storeback Thursday, I just wanted to uh, reminisce a little bit and share that with you guys. 
and gals and uh, you know non-binary folks. Sorry, that was a, a slip. I'm trying to use my gender-neutral pronouns, so correct me on that, please. But uh, yeah, I'll end this video now. If uh, anyone's interested in more detail and the things that I used to do as a designer or working in retail and you know how I literally decided to make the jump, I think I've covered that for the most part, but feel free to ask questions.